promises that we make and indeed it, it can come back to bite us and uh, maybe for some people NAPCO is one of those choices that we made that did not exactly address the problem of youth unemployment and in fact graduate unemployment in the country. For some people it's the best thing that happened at a point when there was a freeze on public sector employment and so yesterday you realized that there was a young man here who said he saved from his NAPCO um, allowances and was able to start his own business. He's opened a barbering shop that is yet to be launched. There'll be a grand launch and I think that we'll all have to be present uh, you know in Kaswa so we can support him. But interesting there's another young man who joined in on the conversation via WhatsApp and he shared his thoughts on NAPCO and how he is a bit confused as to what to do next because he had to quit his job in order to sign on to NAPCO. And so today we're going to be speaking to him, but he's not the only one. Now, over the time that we've been discussing it, I have talked about some executive director. Uh, he is the executive director of Liberty and Policy Innovation. And he also shared his opinion on NAPCO. And he said that the establishment of NAPCO, NAPCO was a misplaced priority, a waste of public resources and a political tool meant to win votes. Why does he say that? You get to meet him shortly. And then we'll talk about the psychology of unemployment. We've been told by some security experts that uh, looking at the percentage of unemployed youth in the country, that poses as a security threat. What does this really mean? And how are these people psychologically affected? Our guest in the studio... First of all, we have Dr. Isaac Newman Arthur. He's a medical doctor and a clinical psychologist. It's been a while we saw him smiling at us on TV. Good morning. You've changed your haircut, haven't you? Uh, yeah, you have, right? This one is second level. Second level. <laughs> hey, hello. But That's you look just, nice. This is second level. Good to see you. <laughs> and also, we have Gabriel Tete Amate. He's a NAPCO beneficiary. Yeah. Oh, good morning. How are you? Yeah, I'm going. All right. And also, finally, we have Peter Bismakofi, the executive director of Institute for Liberty and Policy Innovation. It's what, Ilapi? Yeah, Ilapi. Yeah. Ilapi. Good yeah. to have you in the studios yeah, as thanks. well. I'll yeah. start off with you, and we just want to find out. And by the way, we're doing this together, myself and Cookie. Uh, but let's start off with you. So you tell us, you said you quit a job yeah. that you already had to join NACO. Yeah. Why and how? Um, because of the benefits that um, they gave us uh, from the onset. Mm. Because of the benefit that they gave us from the onset that will secure a permanent job. You yeah. meant the benefits they told you they about? They told us, that's, yes. Oh, that you get the promises they made us. But you already had a job. Was that not it, a permanent job? Yeah, that, no, no, no. What was, job was that? You can't mention an yeah, institution, For, for some reason, way. I can't mention any. Okay. Yeah. okay. But the pay wasn't much as better as... It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't up to 700 Ghana? Yes, no, not okay. at all. How much was it? Yeah. It's, no, it's at least you can mention it. Around four, five hundred. Okay. Around four, five hundred. Yeah. So you thought the seven hundred was an upgrade yes. for you? Better. Okay. Okay. And which is why you signed it, on. Just I have a permanent employment. As oh, so you okay. went in because you knew it was going to be permanent. Yeah. So which of the modules did you sign on to? Digitized Ghana. Digitized why digitized Ghana? Ghana? What did you study in school? Computer graphics. So before you had this other job that you quit, how long had you stayed at home for? Mm, for like two years. Two years after. Yeah, from twenty sixteen. When I finish my national service, okay, yeah, I've been home until. What do you have a degree? Uh, H and D. H and D. In computer graphics. In computer graphics, yes. which is why. So the first job you were doing was it in line with what you studied in school? Mm, no. Not exactly. No, 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 no. So you thought that this would give you something yeah. that you prefer, yeah. and that's why you you hopped onto it. Yes. How has the experience been like? Oh, it has been good so far. Mm. But right now we are we are hoping for the president or the CEO to address us because it's a contract contract basis but even before then but mm. i just want to know digitize ghana yeah. so what what, what what where was your station here in accra or outside accra were you here in accra, in accra yeah. you were in accra, in accra. okay yes. All right. but what exactly were you doing yeah. i was posted to um a government polyclinic okay and then when i got there they needed a help um a help assistant for the pharmacies mm -hmm. okay. so i joined here and then we so, so what were you digitizing totally in the pharmacy yeah. yeah they need okay actually from for the polyclinic we don't have an aspect for computer graphics. So when I went there, I decided to join the pharmacies. So then I that was should have been under the Hill Ghana module. No, if you instead talk about of the digitized Hill, Ghana. If you talk about the Hill Ghana, is for the nurses and then mm. the other stuff. Okay. But if you come to the polyclinic, we have some stuff at the records, some okay. stuff at the revenue. Mm. It's not necessarily to be under Hill Ghana for you to work. Oh. Okay. The record or the revenue. Okay. Yes. But you, you said that you also started developing interest in yes. pharmacy because yes. of where you were posted. Yes. To tell me about that. Yes, I had the interest for pharmacy uh, assistant. Okay. So along the line, I took um, a short course on it and then I have a certificate with it. 
What certificate is that? MCA, Medicine Counter Assistant. Okay. Yeah, along the line. So you can work in pharmacies now? Yeah, I can work now. in the pharmacy now. So that means you're shelving your other um, interest, which is computer um, yeah. science graphics. Or something. Yes, for now. For now. For now. Yeah. Oh, I see. Interesting. How many of you were there as Napconians? We are nine as of now. In that polyclinic? Yeah, in the polyclinic. In that polyclinic? Yeah. No, okay. for the pharmacy department. Oh, side. Oh, okay. Yes. okay. Oh, and nine then, of you in that department? Yes, and even for that, we are not able to run the three shifts. That's morning, afternoon, and night. What do you Why? mean? Because right now, there's only um, three permanent staff over there. If okay. we leave, there are only three permanent staff. Oh. And for we being nine, we can't even run the three shifts. You mean your numbers are not, not even, even adequate enough, to yeah, run the, 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 the pharmacy more, of the polyclinic? The so three. if the nine of you leave, leave it will be left with the three um, 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 pharmacists in that department, yes, in the pharmacy. Basically, at the polyclinic, the um, NAPCOs are... The, the ones running there. The Napconians yes. are the ones the entire running polyclinic. The entire polyclinic. If you leave, it will just be a big, like... How many are you in total in the polyclinic? We are about 95 or so. 95 of you in the yeah. polyclinic? Yeah. Wow, okay. So you are saying that you are waiting for the boss of the secretariat to address yeah, you? Yeah, to just address us. But the president has said that at the end of October, NAP is over. But he made promises that um, there will be permanent employment. He will absorb us into the system. Okay. okay. None so, of you in that polyclinic were absorbed? absorbed. None of you was absorbed? Nobody. Nobody. Did you see people come in and get employed as you were working there? Actually, we knew some people that made their way out of it. But mm -hmm. for NAPCO, like us, and absorb them into the system, I've not heard it. Oh, so they became like, entrepreneurs or they found other jobs? No, they found other jobs, like permanent jobs in different sectors. I don't know the ways and means they oh. had that. Probably hmm. in a different way. Hmm. But, but okay, were you receiving your allowances yeah. on time? Yes, but now we have arrears for two months. For two months, I mean, have you everybody, why? Yeah. Why? Why you, you are in arrears? No, I don't know why. You don't know. Okay, yeah. you haven't asked as well. It's something that happened, so okay. We are but sure but that, did yeah. you receive that communique that yeah. told you to proceed on two weeks leave? Two weeks leave. Yeah, you don't I read know about that. It? Yeah, I read that, but it was under standard Ghana something. Standards Authority. Mm. So but the individual organizations yes. were the ones that determined yes. if you were But I don't get leave. that because we are all under one umbrella. And then they ask some people to just go home. Go and leave. And then some The to rest stay. of you. So as for you, authorities didn't say anything. No. So are you currently working? Yeah, I'm working. I'll be going for afternoon shift now. Like but who's going there. to pay you? That's what I keep asking everyone. We are said. three days into the month, so we're just keeping our hopes high. You have an association, don't you? We don't have an official association. Okay. But you have the only, WhatsApp The only group? association that we have are the district level. Like I said, if mm. you are in this district, you are under this, this district, yes. And they haven't communicated anything as to we have, um, what the way forward information is? Information is going around that we should stay opposed. But contract is a contract. I don't know much about law, but when it comes to contract, if it ends, it ends. If you want to proceed, you have to give an official hmm. letter yeah, for the person. But yeah. we are like hard workers, so... Oh my God. We are just in the system. Peter, let's bring you in because you have said, I mean, you've taken an entrenched position on NAPCO. I don't know what your reasons are. Of course, that's why you're here to tell us. You're saying that it's a misplaced priority. Listening to what he has told us about his experience, what do you say? Is your stand still the same? Yeah, so, you know, the entire uh, NAPCO program, it's a training program. Let me put that. It's mm -hmm. a training program. It's an employment program. It was launched on 1st May 2017 yeah. in Kumasi. Now, there's nowhere and no part of the speech of the president that said that they'll be giving permanent jobs. If you read the entire speech, mm. it says that it's a training and they are hoping that most of them will start their own businesses after the entire Or uh, absorbed into the private sector. Is that not what was no, said? No, there's nothing like <laughs> absorbed into the private sector. There's not a permanent employment. The permanent employment came in 2020 um, um, during the electionary uh, period. Mm. That's where the promise came, mm -hmm. that we are going to give them permanent jobs. So that's where they had the hopes that, yes, they'll be giving them permanent jobs. Mm -hmm. But there was not a permanent job. Now, I'm saying that it's a misplaced priority because all the models do not have entrepreneurial characteristics. So if the training is supposed to equip them to start their own jobs, mm. what job can you create from civic Ghana? What job can, can you create from Educate Ghana? What job can you create from Health Ghana? All these um, um, models, you, you can't start your Not own even business. Enterprise Ghana? What, what do you learn from Enterprise Ghana? You are saying that they cannot create any you jobs from create it. You can create from there because the models are more like social sciences models. They're not like the, um, the workers' um, brigade in those days where they are linked to TVETs. Mm. So when you come out, you can be uh, a fabricator, 
you can go into other projects like uh, masonry. I mean, more like blue colored jobs. Mm. But these are towards white colored jobs, mm. and it's so difficult to start jobs in those uh, environments. Okay. Yeah, so that's one one side of the entire NAPCO. Mm -hmm. Now the cost involved. Government allocated. Now allocation is different from the money is, is there. Is bad, so yeah. government allocated 600 million Ghana cities. And after government allocated, 600 million Ghana is not enough if you have to pay them for one year. Mm -hmm. Now you are supposed to get $200 million, which is about 800 million Ghana at that time, mm -hmm. to fund the entire project in one year. Yeah. Now it got to a point, the allocated money wasn't there. We have to wait for borrowing. That is why most of them couldn't get their salaries. Mm. Now, frustration came in, and they have to, if you are frustrated, then you try leaving the entire uh, uh, System, program. Yeah. You get it. So, then in 2020, then the promise came, we want to make you permanent, mm -hmm. just for votes. You see? So, the entire program wasn't there to solve problems. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was something like a vote by employment program. Because if you really want to solve problems, you, you must drive this project with data. Mm -hmm. So a data-driven employment policies like this will help us to understand how many of these youth or these graduates are not employed. If I'm taking 100,000 out of the X, how many are left behind? Mm -hmm. Now, we are supposed to ensure that most of them will start their own businesses. Now, there's no transition path. There was a career transition program that they also implemented. That's it. One year into... That, that is a career program, but not a transition. But then There's no it's called career pathway transition process. But what? You see, you have start, you start your own business, so you need funding. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at the models they are studying. I don't know if you look at the models. Mm -hmm. The models are basically something like when you are done with a project, you should be able to go out and set up your own business wherever you find the funding. Mm. Because government is not getting saying that when you are done with 100,000 um, Napkoreans, I'll call it Napkoreans. 97,000 actually. Come again? 97,000. 97,000 was what was mentioned after the entire process had mm. been done. You remember it's supposed to start around in July, yeah. but because of funding, mm -hmm. so it went into what we call uh, in October. Now, government couldn't even employ all the, or recruit all the 97,000. The 97 was just a figure given to the public. They are not even up to. How many are they then, if you're saying they are not up to? So from, from sources, I don't know there are about 56,000 of them. 56,000? Of them. Look, let me tell you. How is that possible? Hold on, because the president spoke and he said that 73,844 NAPCO beneficiaries the out of the 92,000 trainees. The president is a politician. Okay? So he's bandying figures about? The president is a politician. We, 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 don't, we don't often question figures. Mm. You see, figures are supposed to be science. If the science you cannot question, so this year, 52,000, where did you get the figure from? No, I can't. It's, 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 no, it's, but you it's, need to tell us. If you're putting this no. out there, I mean, you should be able to I, tell I, us. No, I also get, is I also it find from the secretariat? No, is it? I also find but a this way is a credible it. source? It's a credible source. And for the three years, only 52,000? 56,000. 56,000. of them. Because if you pick the 254 districts and you want to share them evenly, the 100,000, you are going to get only 394 per every district. Mm. You get it? So 394... How many are unemployed in a, particular, in a particular district or municipal or metro? Okay. But then I want to ask him, we, we are battling with unemployment in the country. Government decides to bring this whole NAPCO program to bridge the gap, to absorb all the, the now you're saying 56,000, into the public sector or into the jobs that we even have available in this country. Mm. And then you go ahead to say that it was financially unwise for government to do that. I don't understand. You know, um, government is not, the, it's not an employer. Okay. Mm. Government is a catalyst mm. in the entire environment, which we all know by convention. Mm. Okay. Now, using 800 million Ghana cities annually mm -hmm. okay. to fund NAPCO, to train them without any proper means for them to start their own businesses, are you not wasting money? Do you, know, do you remember President pitch? Do you know how much was given to the individuals who want to present You tell us. <laughs> remember, you tell us. Remember, yes, youth enterprise support? Yeah. How much money was allocated? 10, 10 million Ghana cities. Mm. NEP, National Entrepre uh, Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship Innovation Plan, $10 yeah. million. Mm -hmm. There was a present such uh, uh, what, pitch. In both cases, monies were given to them. Why are they business? Can we pinpoint 10 of them, just 10, and say that, look, they did this, 
and we had these results. So you would have rather all these men and women sat home, not doing anything, not receiving any allowances at there all? There are jobs in Ghana, but the jobs you have in Ghana do not create wealth. You can't create wealth from the jobs you, 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 you jobs are Which jobs are these? Exactly. A lot of jobs are on. A lot of jobs are in Ghana. Like what? Which jobs? What job was he doing before he left for NAPCO? But he is saying that it was, was not paying enough. enough. So the jobs do not create wealth. That's what I'm saying. Okay. You get but it. at least they get the bills paid. But, but at least that, they get the even bills that, paid. If you're saying that jobs in Ghana, why do we have unemployment rates at 4.6%? No, th that's a wrong figure. How is that wrong? What are you striking <laughs> it against to know that it's easy, wrong? Easy, easy. We, 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 we have made unemployment data um, in a way to maintain the state, maintain the government, mm. or maintain the regime. Mm. So every government has a way of maintaining the, the, the regime by using certain figures from what we call government statistician mm -hmm. to, keep us, to keep our hopes so high that, yes, there are no, there are, there are, the job rates is, is low. In 2017, mm. data from the National Statistical Service said that 11.9% of Ghanaians are unemployed. Mm -hmm. So what, what happened that we, we still have? We mentioned 3.4.5 I don't know where you got that figure from. No, but that's it. <laughs> is it? Are we going to Ghana's question? unemployment rate, in fact, as of 2020, was 4.5. We're told that it's 4.6 or what, so. What data was collected nah, around that? What data would... was collected around that? What, what, what data was collected? How did you get that figure? Mm. Have you seen any statistics? Have you seen any report on that? There's nothing. From the statistical service. In 2015, there was a Ghana, uh, Ghana uh, employment policy. Mm -hmm. They didn't even state the total number of people who are unemployed in the country. It's not in. The only document you can rely on is the, the GSSL. Mm -hmm. That's the only document you can sometimes rely on. And even that, even that. So what's the right figure? If you're telling no. us that this 4.7 or 4.6 is wrong, what's the right figure? No, I have not conducted any research on, on, you have on yeah, that. Yeah, but if no you come out and say all, that this is wrong. Then you should have if, data if, if, to if, back if what I've you're not, saying. If I've not cooked this food, and mm. I've tasted it, and I've said mm. the food is not sweet. Mm. You have to cook before I tell the food is not sweet. No, no but, no, but you, you should show me what you can cook so that I know. Figures. So we would expect that you put up the right one. I've not conducted a huge research on it. I have some few figures I have conducted within Tema, Accra, and Kumasi. Okay. But you've not conducted a nationwide. Nationwide. And... We see underemployment as employment. Mm. So if you have a hawker in the street, you tell that person is what? Employed. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. We'll take a look at um, a video from Awal Mohammed. He is the PRO of YEA. He was on New Day and he quoted some figures from the PRO uh, of NAPCO just a few weeks ago on the numbers of NAPCO beneficiaries that were retained. Take a look at this. Yes, 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 yes. So I got the NAPCO. PRO for NAPCO, NAPCO, and this is what he has sent okay. me. Three exit schemes are available for the trainees. Mm -hmm. okay. Entrepreneurship, further learning, and permanency. Mm -hmm. All right. The trainees were asked to choose from these three options. Mm -hmm. They did, so we are in the process of exiting them on the exit schemes they chose. Okay. Then he said, currently we have about 60,000 on the scheme. About 38,000 have been exited into permanent jobs. This is Tahiru. 38,000 38, have been exited into permanent jobs. Permanent jobs. Yes, that, okay. this is Tahiru. Did he I, add the sectors? No, he didn't. But I'm sure maybe when you have him here one day, he will right. be able to okay. break down and tell. So it's 38,000. 38,000 okay. that have been added. Now, so. respond to the question of the youth bulge, yes. national security implications. NSS guys are finished now with their service to the nation. Yes, you get yes, the yes. Figures so I got NAPCO. the PRO for NAPCO, NAPCO, and this is what he has sent me. Okay. Three exit schemes are available for the trainees. Okay. Entrepreneurship, further learning, and permanency. Mm -hmm. All right. The trainees were asked to choose from these three options. Mm -hmm. They did, so we are in the process of exiting them on the exit schemes they chose. Okay. Then he said, currently we have about 60,000 on the scheme. About 38,000 have been exited into permanent jobs. This is Tahiru. 38,000 38, mm -hmm. have been exited into permanent jobs. Permanent jobs. Yes, that, okay. this is Tahiru. Did he I, add the sectors? No, he didn't. But I'm sure maybe when you have him here one day, he will right. be able to okay. break down and tell So it's 38,000. 38,000 okay. that have been Now, added. respond to the question of the youth ball. We will try and get Mr. Tahiru into the studios. Like I mentioned, we've been trying to get in touch with the Secretariat. Nobody's minding us. They are not answering our calls, but that is Awal Mohammed, and he was quoting the NAPCO PRO. And again, just to quote that uh, percentage of youth unemployment, or unemployment rate, it says that the unemployment rate in Ghana is expected to reach 4.60% by the end of 2021. This is according to Trading Economics Global Macro Models and Analyst Expectations.
So at least I'm giving you, um, you know, where you got where exactly I got this you, data you, from. But you, you respond to what Awa uh, had no, said. No, for, that for he what Awa is saying, Awa do not understand what is happening in the system. Do you know, he, what do you mean by he doesn't understand? He doesn't understand what is happening at Nafku. He doesn't understand. He's and, a YEA PRO. He, uh, what is he going to say? YEA PRO, you know, is he... Why is it a different entity? So is it oh, Tahiru who will know exactly what's happening? Is it NAPCO is a different entity? Issues. No. I get it. No. You see, there's no connection between NAPCO and YEA. He was quoting the PRO of NAPCO. And those are the figures that the PRO of From NAPCO. NAPCO. So who should figures, understand NAPCO? So this 38,000 cities he mentioned... <laughs> 38,000 Let me explain to you how, the, how exactly. he's talking about the permanent jobs. Doc, we'll bring you in shortly, The permanent please. job is not about out. that they have moved from, say, civic Ghana into maybe working at the, any other government institutions. As you mentioned, some of them were able to even get police, mm -hmm. military, mm -hmm. at the, and they left. So they call that as what? Part of the permanent jobs that they have ensured these trainees have had. Mm -hmm. These are by their own efforts. Some of them also have been called into other private firms. These are by their own effort because some of them were even writing uh, what we call application letters. So you're saying none of these people who have been employed these into are... permanent jobs. The finance minister gave us a figure that some 11,840. I know you say that I shouldn't <laughs> take their figures, but I mean, he says that some 11,840 people were going to be absorbed because they had given financial clearance for them to be absorbed into, you know, these public institutions as well. Before that, we had been told that some mm -hmm. 11,000 had also gotten permanent jobs. Are you saying that these 11,000 people found Good. their jobs by themselves? And recently, yeah, most of them found a job by themselves. You said most of most them. Most of them. But at least there was some government intervention in some cases, no? Which, which intervention? Did you, you said see? most of them. Most so of the them. Others? The most of them that even the government even helped them. Government didn't help them. Some of them even stopped. Some of them even quit at all. Yes, and we are do not know where they are. But they assume that some of these guys have been employed permanently somewhere. Those who left without the notice of even the NAPCO secretariat, the government do not know where they are. Okay. Now, have people who are currently sitting at home, they, they left because of frustration. Mm. And the government think, yes, they've had that employment. Look at the 30 million that were used to train MMDCs because mm. of NAPCO. 30 million. Mm -hmm. What was that? Why do we train uh, MMDCs to implement NAPCO? And as we speak, the implementation, the whole thing is not done by the MMDCs. But 30 million had been wasted. It's in the budget. I mean, we spent quite 20, a lot 20, 20, even on websites development and all of that. But exactly. We're bringing, we're bringing Doc in to talk about the psychology of unemployment. Before we do that, we went on the streets to find out what people make of NAPCO and especially unemployment, how this psychologically affects young people. This is what they had to say. It has affected most of the youth in the country in the sense that most of my colleagues have completed school and most of them are in the house waiting for the government to um, recruit them into the, the, um, the agencies. So it, it, it's not easy that you go to school and come back without having any job. And also the private sectors, they are not plenty. And most of them too, when they want workers, they only admit few of, of the workers. So it's really a problem for the youth in the country. Okay, we know that unemployment is a big menace of this nation. Then uh, most youth are struggling, as you said, that to make ends meet. So um, the a government, the only thing we can do to solve this problem is that government must know that what the position they occupy over there is not for them to enrich them and themselves, but it's a place of what service and sacrifice. It has caused so many harm to the youth, in the sense that uh, it brings our. Work. As you said earlier, social vices, that is armed robbery, corruption, uh, 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 prostitution, and all others. And the youth are not of themselves. The youth are what, frustrated. We have no, no jobs in, in, the, in the system. And the unemployment rate is actually very, very high. It's actually causing a lot of people to decide to do things they wouldn't do. It's actually affecting their mental state. It's actually causing them to be sad. It's the, causing them to be depressed. And yeah, they're actually fitting in, especially where other of their peers have what, higher opportunities. You see them and they actually feel very sad. You know, yeah. The youth, the youth actually is, is like, with the impact, it has different impacts, you get me? But psychologically, I'm taking it psychologically. So psychologically, I think people feel 
they feel down. Like they don't feel they don't feel themselves when they are not employed. Anyway, everyone wants to get money. Everyone wants to get something to do something. And the only way you get money or you get you make your ends meet is through what working and getting employed. Like getting money for work. You know what I mean? And if you are not getting money from work, people feel down. Like people can't cater for all lot of things. And people want to. You see, the youth of today wants to compete with each other. Don't all right, and so those are some views and opinions from young people across the country, and they are speaking on the psychological effects of unemployment on them. Now, uh, Doc is here, so we'll go to him straight away before we even come to an Napconian. I like to call him that. I, I think I'm in love with that name, by the way. But looking at the stress that he's gone through, and in fact, he was just telling us yeah. that it took a while for him to get his stipends. In fact, let me just get that out of the way. Yeah. It took you how long to get your allowance? Over like nine months. Over nine months, when it, you started, it wasn't coming it, I, it at all. It wasn't coming at all. So what were you doing? I was in it. How are you supporting yourself? Just borrowing money. So it was it with your other ninety-four colleagues? Because in in the hospital, in the clinic that you're in, you mentioned that there are about ninety-five. Yeah, I of have you. some colleagues who are also having the same problem as at me. Hmm. Okay, so out of the ninety-five or the ninety-four, because plus you is ninety-five. Hmm. How many were getting their their salaries regularly? Oh, majority. Majority, majority. Okay. but a few so of you. Like five of us. What was what you exactly going to ask? I don't know. I think one lady stopped. And then four of us, our stipend started coming like because she couldn't, she couldn't take, take it, it anymore. She, her, her own got like one year. Huh? It wasn't happening. It wasn't coming, yeah. So she what just was had the, to walk What was away. the reason why it was I don't delayed? Know if, it, if it was based on her ease which Yeah, because they gave because that reason it was through the ease which payment was system yeah. delaying. And then she told me she rectified that. So you, you were borrowing money to take care Probably, of yourself. Yeah. Have you paid back all the money that you yes. borrowed? Yes. So it's equally like zero. Nothing. Now. Ground zero. Yes. You're starting from ground zero. Look. And now you don't even know you're left from your right. Come in. Doc, what does Come that in. do to a human being? I'm smiling because, you see, mm -hmm. anybody who is employed now, if you check well, they develop certain skills after school. Our school system is just a waste of time. Mm. You know, you, there's some, one of my friends, William Ochi Frimpong. You have changed the curriculum, by maybe, the way. Maybe one, one, one <laughs> of these days, he has to, you know, we, we have something we say, you know, our school system is more like a education not the education. 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 Like give you some information that only makes you feel that you are doing something with your life. But mm. it really, most of you here, you develop what you're doing after school. Yeah. School is just, you know, some of the things I learned in school, you can't even remember that. It's just a waste of time. Mm. Useless. Sokoto Gudali. Yeah. I keep asking myself, <laughs> you know, what so, I'm using that breed of? No, but, 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 yeah. Oh, yes, <laughs> Sokoto Red. Yes. If, you look at, if you look at, for example, if you look at medical school systems, you know, by the time you come out of medical school, you can actually take care of a patient. Yeah. Not to, to, but you actually know what to do. Because of the practicality of Even after of it. that, after that, you know, the, the guidance with the seniors here and there, you're able to. But a lot of the things we, we teach the university, they come out, it's just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. They really can't Those do horses. anything. Mm. <laughs> they, really, they really can't <laughs> do anything. But, you know, employment actually uh, represents uh, something. So when someone, the psychological impact is because of that representation, mm -hmm. one, it affirms, develops, and expands a person's knowledge, skills, and character. So when you're employed, it actually affirms, it develops, and expands your knowledge, your skill, and character. Mm -hmm. So when someone is employed, you are affirming the person's skills. And that affirmation actually gives them a certain sense of worth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you've been invited, you're going to be you know, in charge of this TV show you know, because we found something in you, you pass an interview. It actually does that affirmation. So that is why those who are non-employed, they actually look down on themselves and mm. their self-esteem is actually very low. Imagine you go to an interview and they make comments about you and you, they, they don't employ you. It actually does something to, to your image. Not to cut you, but which is one of the reasons why the president said they set up NAPCO. He said it was supposed to you know, live the self-esteem of unemployed graduates. I, well, I, I really don't want to go there, you know, because, <laughs> because of, you know, if you, look at, if you look at the systems we actually develop to solve unemployment, mm. it, it's not sustainable. And the outcome is really, monitoring is even not there. I'm not sure whether they're even monitored to find out whether their skills have been developed. I'm not sure. But so that, that is one bit. The second bit has to do with the fact that it helps people fulfill their dreams. It gives them an opportunity to fulfill their dreams. And that creates a certain sense of fulfillment. Mm. You know, the fact that I'm, I'm on my journey to actually fulfill my dreams, you know, it creates that. Then also rewards effort. So that is when they're able to meet their needs. So you mm. do something, you are rewarded for efforts and all the needs. You know, so for people to actually cope and adjust to situations in life, they need to be employed. Mm -hmm. They need something that, that comes with a job. Two, 
you know, to be able to also develop their, you know, uh, uh, the journey of self-actualization, to feel that you are actually self-actualizing. You actually need some kind of employment to do that because mm -hmm. you're making a difference. So wh whilst you're working in a certain environment, you're making a, an impact or a difference, you know, it gives you that kind of self, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, that fulfillment, that yeah. actual uh, actualization. It helps you also cope and adjust situation. So when this is not done, you know, the feeling of worthlessness, the feeling of uselessness, you know, and the fact that your life is, is nothing, you know, it's there. And that the stresses around, you know, your life, you know, trying to, uh, it's even women I actually think about because your needs are even more than men. That's why the lady probably yes. yeah. 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 women she their needs it. you can and a, a guy can actually is safe when they they actually don't have money, but a lady is actually vulnerable when they don't they don't have money mm -hmm. for various reasons. Then also anxiety about your own life, your future, you know, and what is going to happen. How am I going to cope and adjust to situation? Anxiety goes up. There are all kinds of research that has even been done in Ghana about psychological impact and all that. And it's even worse when someone is not employed and the duration of employment, if it prolongs, it actually worsens the problems. Yeah. Then depression sets in if the person's stresses and anxieties are not managed well. That is when all the support systems here and there, if it's not there, it becomes difficult. And especially in this part of the world, children are an investment. Mm. And you know, this statement that Marshall was if was if you also show my missing to you know that kind of thing. So when kids are not employed, it actually affects them depending on what you call it, the family pressure and what they represent for the family. Yeah. Because for example, if you are the first person in your family to actually be educated mm -hmm. and you everybody is expecting uh, your stresses go. Did up. you have any family pressures? Because if you are receiving money, you know, there are some families where you have to send small to your mom and your dad. Yeah. Oh, no, no. My junior brothers. Are they, are you were taking care of your junior brothers. So, actually uh, sometimes send them the... some money. Sometimes. sometimes. So it wasn't sometimes. monthly. No, it wasn't monthly. But even that sometimes I'm sure that that was quite a blow to yeah. your pockets yeah. because, because the money wasn't coming. I mean, wasn't coming frequently. So there were times you send them money based on the money you borrowed? No, like, as at when it comes. Then you send them yeah, something. So, so, so in a system where, where, where young people are taking care of adults, which is not even right, mm -hmm. even the Bible doesn't support It's not that. right? The Bible even doesn't support that. It says a good man will live an inheritance for his children's children. You know, it's only, it's only in Africa where we even think that a, a, a child must take care of an adult. Yeah. <laughs> that mindset is what is keeping alone. You have young girls who are taking care of older parents yeah. who, who are not, it's not because of health issues. You know, and, and that that is totally wrong. It puts undue stress and pressure on them. And if they are not able, they're going to depression actually. Mm -hmm. And a lot of suicidal cases can come out of it. People, there are research that has been shown that you know suicidality, you know, thoughts of suicide are attempting suicide. Unemployment is a major risk factor. Mm. And even cognitive distortions. What we mean by that is that your ability to evaluate things in a positive way. Mm -hmm. People see life in a very negative way. You know, look down on themselves here and there because of that self esteem is really down. Mm -hmm. Then also, uh, you may look at abuse. You know, abuse goes up with unemployment. If a woman or a, a man is empowered, abuse goes down. Yeah. If they're educated, abuse goes down. You know, then also crime related problems, it goes up. Then addictive, addictive issues, addictive with drugs and sex related problems, you know, it all goes up. You know, when, mm -hmm. when the people are unemployed and male, female prostitution and stuff like that, they all go up. Yeah. And now, you know, we have, you know, we have uh, some, uh, I will even say glorified kind of prostitution kind of thing where, hmm. you know, now in our system, we have all kinds of technologies for the fact that people have to give some sexual favors in order to be able to get some money. Yeah. So unemployment causes all kinds of problems when, when it comes, and depending on the person's coping strategy, the support system, the duration of the uh, unemployment status, you know, and the expectations of the yeah. person involved. It that actually affects. worsens. I mean, and we've been told that it's a security threat. Many people have spoken on it. Former President John Dramani Mahama. In fact, the Vice President himself even did touch on this issue, that high unemployment is a national security issue. We've had security analysts also say um, the same thing. And so we'll come back to this conversation shortly, but we've gotten some messages. And you can also send in your messages via WhatsApp, or you can join us on social media, the hashtag is TV3 New Day. Cookie, are you ready? Yes, All I right. am. All right, first one from Saki. Um, 
in Apoa Takradi says, Good morning, Bella and TV3. I don't know why the man in the studio is saying there are jobs in Ghana. I stand with him for the fact that the statistics conveyed to the public are wrong. But jobs in Ghana, nah. Now, Kweku B says, Cookie and Bella, good morning. We will always disagree with the rates of unemployment rates in Ghana because the rate of unemployment is not just computed using the number of people sitting at home without a job. What they use is the total number of people who have attained the legal working age, are willing to work and are actively looking for jobs. It is a technical definition of unemployment rates that always brings about the disparity or the disagreement about the rates. Now, within the three-year period, um, GRA made two recruitments without considering the NAPCO interns. Meanwhile, some of us have been in the institution for almost six years now. Is not that there are no vacancies, but they bring in their own people, and we, the Napconians, will rather train them. Bella, hmm. I've been listening to you since Monday, and I'm a beneficiary. No one has been employed into permanency. We have friends on other platforms, no one at all. Bella, the president on several occasions has promised us permanent jobs, so he should please honor his promise. Now, um, David Mauto from Awo, she says, I don't take our well Mohammed's words and figures serious. That guy only comes on sets with fabricated values. Um, he's always tripping with facts. You just, uh, you just cannot trust his words. Truth is, the money that is supposed to be used for creating jobs are used to buy land cruisers, and they say it's privileges they enjoy as leaders. What a country. Now, the PRO for NAPCO is lying. NAPCO has not, and I repeat, has not ensured any trainees permanent jobs as at now. All those who left the scheme found the jobs themselves. And this is coming from one voice. Good morning, Cookie and Bella. This NAPCO thing is really frustrating us. We are done and up till now, not a word from our leaders. How are we going to set up our own businesses when we're posted at various institutions like social welfare, NADMO, planning departments, budget, etc.? Are we to set up an NGO or what may be unless we hustle on the streets? I probably will take the last one, NAPCO has not employed anybody and there's nothing like financial clearance being given to NAPCO trainees on the 11,000 plus figure that you mentioned earlier. Razak from Kumasi sent in that one. Okay, and, and Samilia Atto says that that 49,000 thing is a big lie. -o. None of the NAPCO trainees has been absorbed. Those who have been able to get permanent jobs at the public sector worked it out themselves by paying as much as 10,000 Ghana cities. Peter, is that true? You know, the, the, the jobs are being sold in the country. Public sector jobs are sold everywhere. As uh, much as 10,000 Ghana cities? 15,000 and 20,000 Ghana cities are on. And you've gotten complaints from some I was even carrying, a, carrying out a one-man uh, demonstration on that. I mm. don't know if you've seen it. Mm. People are being, they are, they are collecting 20,000. If you can afford that, you're okay. You get a job in the public so sector. So it doesn't matter what qualification you have. At all. Job experience. If you can pay the money, you get a job. Public sector jobs are for sale. Which institution? Oh, Bella, you, you want me to mention institutions? Oh, I'm just asking. I mean, if you're making some claims, these things are open like secrets. That you back these things are open secrets. Mm. They are there. Take your cameras and go out and ask people who are even paid. Do you know why in the Ghana police says corruption will never end? Some paid to enter. Now they borrowed lots of money from individuals, from family members. Mm. Now when they enter, they have to refund the money. Mm. So they do all means. That's why you see uh, police officers in cars and uh, in police vehicles taking um, individuals to ATMs to withdraw money. These are some of the things that contribute to some of the things you see in the Ghana police service mm. and other areas. Look at the video you showed at that time. I don't know if it's your station, that one recruit of the Ghana Immigration Service was saying that you want to yes. be a billionaire. Oh, yeah. You get it. Billionaire from, from, from government sector? What do you do? You're going to steal. Is it? So for, for public sector jobs, if you can pay, if my brother can look for a place and pay, but be careful because there are scammers around. Mm. But if you can pay 20000 15000 you will get maximum, a job. You get a job. Minimum. Even now, posting. Posting of nurses. Posting of teachers. 2000 3000 You even said that you didn't see the need for NAPCO to be introduced when there were nurses and teacher yes. trainees who were home. Yes. But some of them joined NAPCO and they joined the Hill Ghana, um, you know, side. And, and More digitized Ghana. And what has happened to the Hill Ghana <laughs> individuals? You tell us. <laughs> so... Most of them are nurses, yes. Some of them yeah. joined because they are home. Now, after joining, 
Fortunately, some of them yeah. had employment in 2020 um, last year. Yeah. Some also had it this year. Mm. Some of them had their posting. So they left the NAPCO. So some of them used it as a place to just hide, get something small for themselves. But the frustration also set in, especially mm. with the payment. Because government have to borrow and pay. When the money is not coming from bonds, from um, what do you call um, other facilities, what happens? That entire project or payment plan for the NAPCO rents would then be halted. Money comes in. Mm. So these nurses, fortunately, some of them had to leave. Teachers too also entered. Some of them wrote the Lancisa exams, they passed, and then they moved on. Those are what government is saying that some of them are having uh, permanent, permanent jobs. jobs. But that's not really That it. is not so. And those who also left without the notice of the secretariat, without the notice of the district, without the notice of the coordinators, even in the plan, you see, did you, have you ever seen a, a NAPCO policy document or a policy blueprint? It's not there. There's mm. nothing. Okay. And there's nothing like permanent mentioned in any of the speeches of the president until 2020 elections. Quickly, before we, we uh, take our last words from our other guests as well, what is the way forward? Because the president said we're ending NAPCO so that we can start another policy, whether to re you know, re engage more young people to join NAPCO or to start a new policy. We're yet so, to hear mm, from, from him. The, the, the next recruitment is for breaking the eight. The next it's NAPCO for breaking the eight. Be for breaking the eight. Yes. So it will just be for pure campaign purposes. The entire NAPCO is a vote buying. Pro it's a compensation for the youth who had helped. So there's a huge disc discrimination at the district level. So those who applied, if you're not fortunate and you, you expose yourself to be affiliated with a certain political party, you will not get it. I know a coordinator, when they identified him that he's an, a, he's an opposition person, he had been relieved of his position. Just because he's on the other yes. side, you've got the facts, a, these it, are correct. Listen, I understand not good than any other person, I'm telling you. You do? Than any see. other person. So the figures you are 42,000, 11,000, it doesn't exist anyway. <laughs> it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist anyway. Are you worried about your future? Because now you don't know yeah, very worried. who is going to pay you because you're still going to work. Yes. I don't know. They need to address us officially. Mm. For now, I don't know what to do now. What would you want them to change about NAPCO if it should come back? It should be a sustainable program because there's nothing back in it. And then if they are saying to us that the program is just to train us, to train us forward. The, you are saying that you developed yes. an interest in, the, in uh, you yes, know, and then pharmacy. to train and us. the polyclinic is it a government polyclinic? Yeah, government polyclinic. Ah, so it means that okay. But are you yes. are you saying that you didn't benefit at all from it? You are saying that you developed an interest in pharmacy. You even went ahead to yes. uh, you know take a course in it. Yes. So has so, it not given you, in some aspect, so, a career direction? So what can I do with that? I just need to work with that. Mm. Gather some money for myself. But now to, you're working, but you don't know if you'll be paid or not. Yes. Mm. And you, and course, you, and you know, pool. and you know by all means that the polyclinic needs you because yes, they themselves well. do not yes, even have well. employees. They are lucky now. If you leave, the the debt rates will just will go high. Will go, will go high. Wow. Yes. Okay. Are you? Not what are you going to do? Because now, I mean, if they say go yeah, home, yeah, we are just three days into the month. Mm. They just need to address us officially. Mm. What if they say go home? We should go home. You can imagine the psychological effect on us. We hmm. don't know. We have nothing to do because the stress and then the effort we place, the risks. Mm -hmm. You can imagine. I just I, let me um, give an example. Like as in the COVID, on the the COVID time, the peak of the COVID, um, there were some money given to these health workers for working during the peak of the COVID. Yes, we were involved in that. We took all those risks. But some you, may, you some didn't could get have anything. Died. Yeah, we didn't get anything. They didn't pay you. No, like those essentials, yes. like asking for the for COVID. the health workers, yes. yes, were included. Some some of my colleagues could have died during the COVID, yeah. the peak of the COVID. <laughs> but we took all those risks, and now you are telling us that the program is just for training. Doesn't mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. Doc, it's, it's a, Doc, coming for us. I mean, this no is clearly smiling. a security <laughs> threat because if these people you know, the, get uh, angered, yeah, I, really I, I smile because you know, obvious things are obvious. You know, until we address obvious things, we are not going anywhere. I think we know how to fix things. It's just the, the ability to fix it, I, I, or the willingness to fix it, or the, I don't know how to, to fix it. We, we can, I think, I think these issues are not too difficult to fix as a car. China started from somewhere, and now China, because they actually, I even, maybe my final words, I want to advise every young person listening to me, two things, one, live as though there's no government, and as though your country has no borders, mm. if you really want to survive live as though there's no government and as though your country has no borders. What it means is that develop skill, you know, mm. develop your talent, 
develop what nobody can take away from you. Mm. Because that is when you can actually navigate your way through life. Yeah. And it takes time for anybody to actually get established. When you start, you know, I know someone who finished university now, he's, he's a very top fashion designer. He sews. Mm. And most of my kaftans, he sews. Mm. You know, and, and it was a skill. So you, you, when, no, what, uh, no, what, what develops a nation? Okay. Skills. We, it, everything we see around is someone's talent. But, 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 but Bella, I, yeah. So that means Bella, the finance you know, minister was right by saying that yeah, people should study. Yeah, so, so, Bella, you know, not, you know. I'm, I'm, hold I'm on, Peter. Hold on. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to that. I'm giving an advice. <laughs> we don't have much I'm, time, I'm though. Yeah. I'm sure they'll cut us. Okay, one minute. <laughs> yeah. no, for example, when I came here, I was looking at these designs. Very nice. I can duplicate them. Mm -hmm. I'm a medical doctor. But you can. Well, I can. It's very, very simple. Can I pass a comment? Pass a you comment are all not built to... To be entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. No, yeah. So I'm not talking about entrepreneurship. I'm talking, learning. About, I'm talking about developing a skill that nobody can take away from you. Okay. <laughs> right Is that now, possible see, for everyone? Uh, so I'm giving an advice. So Let's hear from you. Uh, so for career. example, for example, when you were at the pharmacy and interest started, yeah. you went for a certificate. That certificate can fetch you something. If you're able to continue developing that skill, <laughs> you're going to go somewhere without a gap. I'm an island on my own. Uh, so, so <laughs> I cannot feel that. Uh, one, one, one of these is I think you would understand what I'm he saying. He needs a job I to need be a able job to, to <laughs> and, you know. So, so one of these is what I'm trying to say because is Because if you go outside, mm. MCA is taking like 500 and then I can't depend on that. Mm. No, no. So, so, so I need mm. this job to just so my, my advice, upgrade to um, pharmacy technician to pharmacy. and then probably yeah. upgrade to. So my mm. advice, so we just need a job. My, so my advice to every to young person listening to me is that. One, develop a skill. Okay. Two, submit to mentorship. And any time you're looking for help, ask the way forward. The help may not be finance. Mm. The, the help may be an idea or a certain counsel from someone who is already doing it. And that can help you go very far. Okay. He has a photography business that he's hoping to start, by the way, right? Yeah, it's not official. Oh, don't get it. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. But our time is up. Unfortunately, we have to go. Um, I know Peter wanted to say something. Yeah. Do we have 30 two seconds. seconds? Yeah, yes, two seconds. No. I want to talk about the entrepreneurship thing. You know, uh, it is not everybody that has what we call entrepreneurial behavior. So there are individuals with entrepreneurial ambitions, but they don't have entrepreneurial behavior. Okay. So monies have been given to people. GNZ, the World Bank, mm -hmm. they are giving money to startups. Yeah. But why are the businesses? Because the entrepreneurial behavior is not developed, it's absent. But the, the ambitions are there, the, the ideas are, are there, there the, but the, the behavior is not there. Okay. That is why we are missing it. Can you train to, to get the behavior? Yes. You can learn? Yes, I'm, I'm a consultant on uh, okay. yeah. startups. Yeah. So. is training there. So I think you <laughs> we have to go. <laughs> we'll contact you. We'll contact you. Peter Bismarcofi <laughs> is the Executive Director for Institute for Liberty and Policy Innovation. Gabriel uh, Tete is an APCO beneficiary. And Dr. Isaac Newman Arthur, he is a clinical psychologist and a medical uh, doctor. Thank you so much for hanging with us. Thank you for sharing your story. And please, he's looking for an opportunity. If you can hire him in your pharmacy and, you know, pay him quite well with his certificates, we'll be glad. So please reach out to us. Thank you so much. We'll be back with some entertainment and also um, Kejitia. Is here, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back.